And I'd like to firstly welcome everyone to the ANZHFR 2021 HIPFest. We now have over 200 participants logged in. Um, and I'd like to introduce Stuart Fleming, who's the ANZHFR webmaster. And he's going to talk about the functionality of the registry and how to make the database and the data work for you in your efforts to improve hip fracture care. Stuart has had a long involvement with hip fracture registries, starting in the UK with the National Hip Fracture Database, before moving back to Australia and developing the ANZHFR. He keeps the ANZHFR ticking along and is a regular point of contact for registry users. So Stuart, over to you. All right. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. And uh, I will now share some slides. Uh, if you are just joining us now, I'm sorry, you've actually missed some really cool stuff. Uh, I've been involved in hip fractures as uh, in the hip fracture registry uh, or hip fracture registries, uh, as Elizabeth said, for, for many, many years. And uh, I just got so much out of this morning. Uh, and I, again, I, I'm IT, so I don't get to use any of this, but it's just, I just thought it was absolutely fascinating. And I love watching the questions and getting answers and, and seeing uh, what's, what's, what the uh, opinions are. So I'm just gonna go in and go through some slides uh, reasonably quickly uh, so that I can get to some questions. Cause I think that's probably where we're gonna get the most benefit from this, from this morning, or sorry, this afternoon. Uh, when you log into the hip fracture registry, we have a, uh, and if you haven't be logged in before, this is this might be new to you. So that's why I'm going to go through uh, some of this now. Uh, when you log in, you get uh, access to a dashboard that was developed uh, two years ago. So it's due for a refresh. Um, and I'm, I'm very curious to hear about how you use this yourself. Uh, and if you have any ideas on what you would like to see in the new dashboard. Uh, so uh, in green, we have the snapshot of the hospital. So specifically, how many active patients you have uh, for the current year, how many records there are, when the last record was modified, and uh, a, click, a quick link to all of the records, so you can go quickly to that. Then we have uh, on the right-hand side there, patient type you can see in period. Uh, realistically, what this is showing is uh, what's available, uh, what the uh, outcome measures are or the averages uh, for various measures so you've got uh, time in ed there in hours in the square so up on the left here we have uh, one record so this year this is the demo database so in this year well, we have one record uh, that's available this year and it the square bracket shows you how many it's showing for this particular column and I think I have had uh, a number of questions about this. And so one of the things that uh, even if it's only a minor rewrite into the dashboard, uh, what I'm gonna be doing is having uh, highlights so that you can actually see if you hover over it, it'll tell you what that means. Uh, so if you selected, you know, maybe last year, maybe someone didn't go through ED. So this might say 20 records, but in ED, the, these numbers are based on 18 records, for example. Down below this, we have the, uh, the quality standards and the seven quality uh, care standards that we have. And again, the number in brackets is the number of records that this, this value is based on. Uh, doesn't look particularly sexy here because it's uh, all dummy data, but uh, I do know that there are people that when you modify uh, this value up here, so if you wanted to say for the last quarter, that's a drop down that'll allow you to show the last six months of the last quarter, or you can change the uh, the values in here. Uh, one of the tricks is when you when you change a value in here, uh, if you just hit enter, uh, that will then uh, refresh all these values for you. So everything in the light blue, so this 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 one here and these all down here are all based on these little criteria up the top here. So if you say only show me those that were admitted via ED, or if uh, alternatively you're looking for show me the values for people that were transferred in. Uh, you can unselect those, just select transfer in, and it'll show you just those patients and all the quality uh, indicators for that subset of patients. Uh, if I click on all patients, uh, you'll see I've got a, a list here of all patients. Uh, active patients are those that haven't been discharged yet. So we don't have an active discharge, but uh, and all patients allows you to find all of those. Um, if you, um, I, and I am curious, uh, and I probably should have organized a poll for this, but I am curious as to 
uh, we have a number of hospitals. We've been running for a number of years now, and this is starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, you can search by anything. So you can search by the MRN, URN in there. If you, it, it does say name, I get that. But if you type in uh, 6789, um, it will find any anything with 6789 in the name or the uh, MRN, URN. Uh, and for those of you in New Zealand, I saw that there were a couple from New Zealand, uh, that would be the NHI, same functionality. Uh, let's see. The new thing that's been added here, we've, we've had this, this field called incomplete fields, but to make things a little bit simpler now, uh, if you hover over that now, it'll show you what fields are actually missing. So you don't have to go looking through trying to find every single field. Um, this has been used, uh, I know, by a number of locations to just quickly go through and they'll say, right, just that, oh, yep, 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 yep. Okay, most of these are for, uh, example, malnutrition. So I'll go and find all the malnutrition data and then I can come back and, and put all that in. Uh, the intention is uh, I'm just trying to make it easier for uh, data entry people to, to get through this pretty quickly. Um, once you click into a patient, if you've not done this before, this, is, this might be new, but once you click into a patient, uh, you get to see, uh, firstly, the demographic data at the top, uh, the patient details, and then there are tabs for uh, various things. I'm going to go through this reasonably quickly uh, so that I do have some time for questions. Uh, so we have patient details. We have all of the admission details. Uh, this one is, uh, so Mary Contrary is set to admission via ED. Uh, but if it was a, uh, if she came in via transfer to another hospital, there would be an option here for uh, which transfer hospital. Uh, and some of these fields change based on that. Then we have our assessment piece. So all of the questions, again, now uh, this, again, if you haven't uh, logged in recently, uh, the hovering over this I now, and this is a slide, so it doesn't do it, but hovering over this I will give you information for each of these fields. So I've tried to build in the data dictionary uh, information and the explanations uh, right into the program, um, but you will find that you can just still tab through quite quickly. Um, so hopefully that is useful. Uh, then we have, uh, treatment. Uh, again, if surgery is, is no, you get a smaller subset of questions than if surgery is yes. Uh, our discharge uh, information, this will uh, what the, uh, affect whether they're in uh, all patients or in uh, just active patients. We don't have a 30-day follow-up, we do have a 120-day follow-up, and we have this optional uh, EQ5D here. Uh, it hasn't been used too much. Um, I don't have the figures at hand exactly how much that's being used, uh, but I do know that it's uh, it's not extensively being used at the moment. Um, but the hope is that that's uh, going to grow now. Uh, what you'll see next is custom fields. This is something that has recently been added. Um, if you have created custom fields, they will appear in the, uh, well, in most cases, the last tab. Uh, and this is only for your hospital. So uh, in a second, I'll show you how we how I've added these. But this allows you to capture stuff that is not part of the uh, ANZ HFR minimum data set, but it might be something that you particularly wanted to capture in your uh, in your facility, your hospital. So uh, you have a number of different options, uh, and I'll cover those as I show them uh, in a little bit. Uh, but while we've got such an amazing group on, we've got 197 people on at the moment, uh, there is actually another tab there that says bone protection medication after hip fracture. Uh, I'm not going to go click on it. I'm not going to go into it. But there is, uh, we are working towards being able to do sprint audits. And this is where a sprinter would, would appear. Now, you will get information on this later. But I just wanted to highlight that that is something that we've been working on uh, and that it is coming reasonably soon. Uh, it's a limited a uh, number of questions for a limited period of time. Uh, once that period is ended, that tab will disappear. You won't see it anymore. Uh, and you'll be nominating whether you be participate or not. Uh, if I go now, so this showing, I'm logged in as a, an administrator, so only hospital administrators. There's two main levels, or sorry, three main levels of uh, access to the hip fracture registry. Uh, there is the hospital administrator or prof uh, a principal investigator. Uh, they get to uh, have the export button, they get custom fields, uh, and they get to uh, approve other users. Uh, I'm logged in as a hospital administrator, so I've clicked on custom fields, and these are the custom fields that you saw on that, on that record. Uh, you can have a date, you can have a drop down, so uh, an option of 
you know, what that might be. Uh, you can have numeric and you can set minimum and maximum for those. Uh, I've got another drop down there. You can have date time. Uh, so um, as well as the date component, you could just have a date time, which is a single object. Uh, you could just have open and free text and uh, you can have a drop down. And I have a question about what is the benefit of a sprint audit. Um, I'm going to leave that for the team, but this, there's going to be a whole piece around this. I was just kind of showing you where it might, where it's going to end up. Um, so that's, that's the custom fields and, and quite happy to uh, get going. And why do you need hair color? Uh, sample text, uh, Pathy. Uh, we don't actually need it. It's just an idea of what you could use it for. I was, again, this is all sample data. Uh, I, do, I am curious as to how people are using reports. Uh, we have a, a fairly large uh, group of reports that are available. Uh, what's recently changed is that you can now show it by quarters, by months or by years. Uh, you can show for uh, all time uh, and it will show uh, your hospital, which at the moment is Dummy Hospital, which lives in Queensland. So it'll show you me, uh, my hospital versus my state versus the country average. And obviously very, uh, uh, in, um, unimportant data here because we're just using dummy data, uh, but that can show some fairly interesting things. But I'm curious as to how you guys might want to use that or what, uh, how often you look at this, if at all, and, uh, and what reports that we don't have that you would like to look at to, that you can see. Uh, finally, um, the, one of the last things that I wanted to cover off this, this afternoon was the idea of the uh, quality audit. Uh, so we, uh, the quality audit has now finished, uh, but if you didn't get a chance to look at it or if you uh, haven't seen this before, what the quality audit is, is the idea that uh, we take a stub of an existing record at random um, from the previous 12 months uh, and we ask you to refill in uh, various uh, fields on that form. And what happens is it gives you a result and that's what you can see here. No, Stuart, you can't click on things. Don't click on it. It's a slide. Um, what it gives you is that, uh, so uh, this, this uh, was the stub of the record. So there'll be a, a, another Florence Marsh record uh, under all patients. Um, and we refilled in that record and we got 41 matched fields uh, and four mismatches. And uh, it then tells you what those mismatches are. The idea of this is to... Um, give you an idea of where the, uh, so what we've seen happen is that people are checking where their data is coming from, because if they don't match, why, why is that? Uh, so this year we'll be reporting on just uh, the quality uh, indicators and, and how well this was completed. Um, but I think the intention is to try and help uh, facilities uh, work out how they can better record their data just by making uh, the use of uh, standardized uh, collection methods uh, and sources for information. Uh, Jackie has uh, replied uh, to that question about sprint audits, uh, that they're a simple way of drilling down to a particular error of a short period of time to get a better understanding of what is happening. Uh, bone aim medication is just an example of, and for a short period, we'll gather information as to what the barriers and enables are to, uh, to getting people on treatment. So, uh, Again, so my big, uh, the, the big focus for me at the moment uh, is going to be the national report. Uh, but I am curious to know if you have any uh, suggestions on what you'd like to see on the dashboard uh, indicators that you uh, measure, that you track, that you would like to, um, to put up there. Uh, please uh, send them through to uh, uh, admin at hipfracture.com.au. That's how you can get access to me. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is redoing uh, the front page of the website and then we're looking to see uh, some suggestions on what you might think would be useful for public facing data. So I'm going to ask you is a question that's come through on Slido just around functionality for, um, for hospitals that are within one health district. So in some of the states in Australia, we have more than one hospital that is um, contributing to the registry and what are the plans if any for a view like the dashboard that allows comparison of multiple hospitals within that one health district 
what would that involve oh, to allow that to happen? Complicated question without notice. Excellent. Just the type <laughs> I like. Uh, yeah, so we, I, I, in, in, another, uh, in another project, we are currently working on the ability to have this idea of uh, shared control so that uh, the, uh, the idea is we can group various uh, bits of data together uh, and provide that. So you may have access to four hospitals or three hospitals or two hospitals. Uh, it was not something that was built into the hip fracture registry uh, from uh, the start, but uh, now that we are working on that in another project, I, it's certainly something we could add, um, add together. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Stuart. There's a large number of questions on Slido and many of them relate to data definitions uh, requests for changes to the data dictionary, new options or altered options. Um, and so what we will do is take those suggestions through the process that the ANZHFR has for reviewing um, those ideas that come in from the users of the system, because the registry always looks to try and build into its system um, those, those user suggestions because you people are um, the ones that that know best how the registry works for improving care. So we'll take those on board and quite possibly put them together and respond to them um, in a newsletter or in a future communication. Thanks, Thank Stuart. you, Elizabeth.